afternoon, team. The following presentation will discuss the change management plan in terms of addressing low productivity within patient financial services. My name is Derek Scott. I will be presenting today. Please hold all questions until the end of the presentation. The items that will be discussed today, introduction, productivity and claims count, a proposed solution and cost, implementing change, evaluating change, conclusion, and of course, questions and answers. Low productivity and quality monitoring are key performance indicators within the department. This ensures that they're meeting the goals and meeting timely filing guidelines in terms of claims processing. The employees do struggle each month in terms of meeting these goals. Implementing of training and process improvement to address low productivity within the department has fostered collective thinking, collaborative attitudes, and overall involvement in the change management plan. Best practices analysis. This slide here just demonstrates how the data uh, is exported from the claims processing patient accounting system, EPIC, and it just trends and shows the percentage over seven days. The percentage for best practices is 80%, but industry standard is 70%. So as you can see, we're below best practices, however, we are at 73%, which is industry standard. The remaining 30% is for contracted adjust adjustments, self-pay, and charity absorption. Productivity. The required productivity is 75 claims per day, which is 375 claims weekly regarding review and reconciliation. This slide here shows a weekly progression of productivity from 11.3 to 12.6. It shows the claims count, the total dollar amount, and percentage. And as you can see, as the week progressed, the percentages fluctuated, leaving end of week numbers kind of at a low number. All of this claim processing in terms of productivity includes payer-specific, Medicare, Medicaid, Blue Cross, and all commercial payers that are assigned to the department. Proposed solutions. One of the biggest uh, solutions to the problem would be training and development sessions. Length of training, 30 days, Cost, $50 per supervisor, which there are two supervisors in the department that will be involved in the process, and $25 per employee, which is 15 employees. The training module, $1,500. Supplies, $500, and the total cost of the training session would be $2,475. The training budget allocated for the training sessions is $3,000. So as you can see, the budget is well below uh, the total cost of the training session. The employees will complete these ses sessions and given the specific updated payer information needed to complete the claims review process. The overall goal of the change project is to ensure the department is up to par and meeting or exceeding the expected goals. Our second proposed resolution in this process is redesigning the individual development plan. This will, this will measure each employee's performance on a metrics of high, medium, and low. And as you can see, this slide demonstrates high, exceeds expectations, that means the employee is actively reviewing 75 claims daily, 90 to 100% quality score, medium meets expectations. They are producing 75 claims a day or below. 
80 to 89 percent percent quality score and then low they need improvements they'll be low 75 claims per day their quality score is 79.9 which means they're below the quality score these reviews will be key to pay raises and performance although other factors will be included the AR representatives are expected to achieve a 95% productivity goal with a 5% less margin due to quality scores in efforts to meet best practices. Implementation of change. Upon implementing these change initiatives, we're going to model the seven step process, which would be agreeing on an ultimate objective listing all of the criteria needed to meet the goals, provide evaluations of all options related to the data that we pull that is analyzed, and provide an evaluation of all criteria versus next step actions, and review and provide additional choices for the remaining criteria, and then we'll pull all that information together. We'll also model the William Bridges' 1991 Managing the Transition. This model will help us illustrate how to engage the employees to feel a sense of belonging and inclusion during the implementation of this change. This includes the stakeholders and all key players involved. Now, we talk about all of the processes being put in place. Now, we will go into how we will evaluate the success of this project. Here you'll see we have user productivity pool for a week and we will be using an analysis with the performance matrix and external and internal IT software to monitor this productivity and information to see how the numbers trend. And as you can see, the trend goes up, up, and up. The IT team is going to be heavily involved in monitoring uh, our dashboards and our receivables, our strategic planning processes, procedures, and protocols to help bring in cash in terms of this project. Overall, addressing the change management project is an integral part of, an or of organizational success. Investing in improving the performance management cycle and staff training and development will warrant success for both employees and organizations alike. Thank you for sitting in on my presentation, and now the floor is open for questions and answers.